And another thing that's really special and cool about the uh, smart comp is the way it's applying compression. Because what, what we use, it, it's called spectral compression. And it means that um, if you're using spectral compression, uh, I can again uh, show that also visually. If I disable spectral compression, you can see that there are mainly lines down there. And the line means that in all frequencies, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, there's the same amount of compression applied. And if I increase spectral compression, you can see that these lines turn to shapes. And it means that in certain regions, there is more compression, compression applied than in other regions. And what it does, like what SmartComp does is, it looks at, like, continuously at the signal and at the energies in different frequency bands. And if there is a certain frequency band that's mainly responsible for causing the compression, so that's, that's overrepresented, it compresses this band a bit more than the others. So, what it, so this is kind of acting like a very, very quick and very, very fine-grained multiband compressor, but without having to adjust any parameters. So it's just, how, how do you say, it's like inherent to how the compressor is implemented. Mm. And this is, um, that's the reason why smart comp can sound extremely smooth, even if you have quite harsh compression settings. So um, that's, in terms of just, Normal compression, a, a great feature that we have here. Can you tell us um, why you might want to filter out certain frequencies there? I see you've got um, you've got a filter there for the t uh, essentially roll off for the highs and the lows. Why might you yeah. want to do that instead of just having it completely open? So what you can control here is actually two things. Um, one thing is to select the the frequency region where you want to apply spectral compression. And for example, let's say you have a a problematic low end and you want to apply spectral compression there because there is something I don't know a kick that's always coming through too heavily but you don't want to for whatever reason um, apply spectral compression to the to the mids and highs you can just limit the spectral compression to the low end and the rest is normally compressed so it means broadband, broadband compression so same amount of compression for everything above this line and spectral compression uh, in this green area. But what you can also do, you can even limit the whole compression to this region, and that's when you increase spectral link. So if I set spectral link to 100%, now only the low frequency range is compressed and the rest of the signal is untouched. Um, this causes, this can cause quite a lot of, of um, change in the sound, because if you only compress the bass and the rest remains intact, then the, ba the bass re loses um, power and it, it becomes brighter, the whole sound, but it can be exactly what you want. So this is a bit like using, I don't know, it's a bit like using a, a dynamic um, EQ on a certain frequency region, but it's different. It's, it's something that you have to play with and um, really depending on, on the signal that you have, this may work wonders or you can just leave it to full range, 100%, uh, 0% spectral link, that's, that's the default mode, uh, how, how you would use it.